Hey guys, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about acronyms, uh, specifically ones in web development, right? What are 20 ones that I find that I, I use or I find that are common enough that you probably should know? And so we're going to go over those right now. <laughs> Are you thinking about sliding into the DM of Dev Mountain? Are you are you thinking about maybe going to a BC boot camp? Might I recommend Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp? Not only do they have quality assurance, web development, mobile development, but they got much more than that. On top of it all, they have tuition, including your housing, so you can get up and go this moment. Check them out at devmountain.com. Yeah, so why are we going over acronyms in um in programming well a couple of reasons one you're gonna see these quite a bit and it sucks to be that guy who's smiling and nodding like you know what's going on yeah yeah and then you're like what the hell is crud <laughs> yeah you know especially when you're getting started you haven't sort of worked these into your vocabulary and you're just a new developer or it's just subjects you haven't touched touched on right even if you're a senior dev there are some crud some some acronyms that you may not be familiar with and there's a ton we're gonna go for 20 or so i could probably do five five videos like this if i wanted to but these are the ones that i i like i use and i think are important so let's go ahead number one crud i think i already said it right what is crud CRUD is create, read, update, delete. Now, what does that mean in its context? Essentially, it's referring to a tool that, an application where you can create data in the database, get data from the database, that's to read, update data to a database, and delete data from a database. It's kind of an admin tool at the end of the day, um, or just the, the functionality, the CRUD functionality. So, um, you know, depending on if you're on the back end or front end, but that's really what it is. It's the ability to create, read, update, and delete. Spa, um, not the jacuzzi, not the jacuzzi, uh, but spa, uh, single page application, really referring to technology like Angular, where the page never actually reloads. You're on that one page and uh, you're just sort of changing the way that it looks, saving reload time, and just having really a single page uh, at, at the end of the day. So AJAX stands for, uh, and you know what's funny, uh, but when I made when I was making this list, sometimes I've been saying these acronyms for so long that I actually forgot what the actual definition was. So AJAX, asynchronous JavaScript and XML, it's essentially the ability to go and um, you know do HTTP calls at the end of the day. Uh, that's really it. Um, so that was one that I was like, what the hell does Ajax mean again? And, and it, <laughs> I, I thought it was kind of funny. So uh, the dry principle, what is dry? Don't repeat yourself. What does that mean? Um, does it mean if someone doesn't hear you, do you not speak up? No, but it does mean that when you are modeling out your applications, when you are building them out, that what you want to do is you want to build it in such a way that if you can inject it elsewhere, you don't have to rewrite your code. If you can use it elsewhere, you don't have to rewrite your code. So it's really creating the functionality of having to only do something once while getting as much value out of it as you can. So CLI, uh, command line interface. So you've heard me talk about the Angular CLI where we can use it to get up and going. Um, there are a bunch of CLI tools so that's one you may not be uh, familiar with. I was already a developer when I didn't know this next one. What? And it's not like oh, it's a. It's not like these are mind blowing concepts. A lot of times it's just like oh, I never looked it up. API. I didn't know until I was already working as a developer what API actually stood for, and it stands for Application Programming Interface. An API is essentially just a third party. Um, application that gives you access to their data and and some functionality. An example would be the YouTube API where I pull down my subscribers uh, dynamically and so it's always updating on my website, right? Um, CDN, Content Delivery Network. This is really nothing more than the a server that's giving you files, right? So if you've ever had to use Bootstrap and you didn't want to download it or install it locally, you can go and use a CDN, which will host those files there for you, which is kind of cool, right? Kind of nice. 
uh, CMS, content management system. That's things like WordPress where, um, you know, WordPress is probably the most popular CMS out there where it allows us to easily update our web pages, uh, to easily update the content, to manage the content. You can have CMSs on top of custom web applications uh, for certain aspects as well. But that's what CMS is. DOM, D-O-M. Um, not the dude from Fast and the Furious 19 or whatever they're on now. Uh, <coughs> but um, uh, the document object model. This is uh, essentially the way the, the, stand, the internet standard for how the web page should be. If, if it's kind of very basic way of putting it. So when you're working in all these different browsers, they should adhere to the DOM, which is going to allow, which is going to allow you as a developer to know that certain aspects exist and how to target those. So it's a, it's a lot more detailed than that, but that's, that's a very brief uh, understanding of it. So uh, ES, ECMAScript. Uh, so if you see ES, um, you might see ES in place of JS for JavaScript, but ES ECMAScript is the technical name and the organization that updates JavaScript. That's all I got for that one. All right, uh, IE. This may surprise you, um, but the letters IE don't stand for an I word and an E word. It actually is dog shit. Uh, moving on. IIFE. Um, <laughs> immediately invoked function expression. This is a JavaScript term. I'm not quite sure if this is used in other languages, but this is essentially a function that you write in your code where it gets called at runtime when the document loads immediately. Immediately in the sense that you don't need to call it. It's already set up to always call. And so uh, you might use this for a variety of reasons, maybe to initialize some values. You might use it to to uh, kick off some sort of counter. You might, there's a ton of different reasons, but essentially it's a way of writing a function that will allow you to have it go on, on uh, load. JSON, um, JavaScript object notation. Uh, JSON is a, uh, is a, uh, a good one if you're not familiar with JSON. Uh, essentially is how we send our data to and from, right? We send a stringified JavaScript object. That's really what JSON is. Uh, it's a stringified JavaScript object that we then turn into an object, and then sometimes we turn the object back into a string and send it back to the database. The reason for that is it's easier to store the data. It's um, more cost effective, I, I have no doubt, to just send a string than to send a full object. So you have all this sort of very practical reasons why we use JSON. So it seems to be the standard. So the mean slash mern, I'm going to keep this as one. But uh, the um, Mongo, it, these are essentially web stacks, full stack web stacks in JavaScript and uh, MEVN uh, pretty soon with the way Vue is growing. So um, so you have uh, MongoDB is the M, Express is the E, which is a sort of a, a back end framework, if you want to think of it that, that's used with Node, which is what the N is. And then the A, R, V is uh, <laughs> Angular, React, or Vue. Uh, so these are just jo full stack JavaScript stacks that you're going to be using or that you could be using down the road. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Model view controller. Um, or <laughs> excuse me, MVC. I'm so, I, I gave it away before I said the letters. I blame the Kale. Um, MVC. This is the, this is um, a lot of how web applications nowadays are organized. You have your model, which is sort of your data structure. You have your view, which is the way that it looks. And then you have the controller, which handles the logic between the model and the view and you know sends data to and from, basically, um, and does all the logic. So it's, it's, a, it's just a, a way of essentially programming web applications, architecting it out. Okay, OOP, object-oriented programming. Something a lot of web devs uh, who may just be getting started and weren't in a traditional computer science program may not have been exposed to. Uh, although it's not a super complex concept, in my opinion, it is some, a different way of thinking. So object-oriented programming essentially means that you're building out your classes which uh, and you're, you're doing 
you're building classes and cons constructors and it's a different way of programming in terms of how you model your code as well um way of or it's almost a way of organizing your code although a lot i think a lot of people would disagree with me but you treat things as objects right um take my cat might be of t of the might inherit from the class biological animal and it may have its own unique properties such as legs and whiskers and then it might have functions such as meow and that might take in a property and so you start treating it and then you create an instance of cat and then you can cre keep creating that and it almost works with the dry principle as well where you don't want to pre repeat yourself because i have three cats why would i write three three different cat functions right or three different cat classes or objects uh anyhow we've spent enough time on this one uh uh, ASCII. What is ASCII? I didn't know what ASCII stood for. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know that it was an acronym till I did some research about things I should do. ASCII is the um, American Standard Code for Information uh, Interchange. Now you know. If you knew that one, uh, you're a liar. I don't believe. <laughs> I don't believe you. But if you did in the in the comments, you can say you did. We'll believe you. <laughs> but uh, ASCII at the end of the day is a way to numerically keep track of characters and create a standard that will work um, anywhere in the world, in theory. Um, although it's the American standard. In America, we have our own standards, which is why we're only only people not on metric, minus maybe one other country. But that's, that's neither here nor there. FTB, FTP, uh, file transfer protocol. This is basically just um, the ability to send files to and from uh, file servers and, and other uh, applications. All you gotta know is that you send files and you get files. That's pretty much it. SDK, software development kit. This is software that will help allow you to use their other software or maybe just the software itself. That That's that's really all I gotta say about SDK. Uh, you'll use it for various software applications as, as you're moving on. Um, as you're expanding, it could be uh, writing, you know, the SDK for C Sharp uh, for some library or whatever it may be. It could be anything. And finally, last but not least, because we could be doing this all day, UAT, User Acceptance Test. This is one that I didn't know in, until uh, my recent job because I never had to have anything use UAT before because I was just doing the UAT, I realized. Uh, so uh, UAT essentially means that after you get done building your what you think is the the project what you think is the feature it goes off to a higher power of to be and they say that is right dylan often not they say that's all right dylan how can we fix this to make it good dylan uh so it's basically says you just send it up to the powers to be to say hey um is this what you wanted that's that's it and if it is you, you pass uat if it's not it comes back and then you make some changes so uh, I hope you guys found this helpful as well as fun. I'm sure I keep it a little, you know, we're, we're learning here. We got to keep it a little spicy. Um, so I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, support me on Patreon, and hit that notification bell, which according to YouTube may or may not mean that you see all the videos. Um, but if you like my videos and you want to see them, it doesn't hurt to subscribe and hit those notifications. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. That kale juice in the morning. Whew. Quick thank to our sponsor, deviceplus.com. If you guys are interested in Arduino and the Internet of Things, such as Raspberry Pis, might I recommend checking them out, deviceplus.com. If you click the link in the top corner, it will take you to a really cool thing. It's an intro beginner level tutorial of how to build a tripwire using Arduino. Check it out.